Welcome back. Well, this is Edutainment Studios, and we're here with Alan Gassman and Dr. Law and Wisdom with Alan Gassman. We're talking tonight about 50 Ways to Leave Your Overhead, and the topic for this module is how do you choose how you want to practice, because there's many different ways to do this. There's um, hospital integration, for example. Let's start with that. Let's talk about what that is. And how, and how a practice is set up under that model. Well, many hospitals will purchase a medical practice and will be smart enough to leave it alone and not try to, to bury it in bureaucracy. The hospital is interested in getting admissions and tests. Mm -hmm. They're interested in integrating with the medical practice. They're interested in having the medical practice cooperate to help control costs within the hospital. Most hospitals are losing fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars per year on each doctor. When you look at what happens within the doctor's physical office, but they make it up with more admissions, more testing to their outpatient facilities, oh, okay. so it's like more referrals leader. to yeah. their other to their surgery center and to their home health care, and they're legally allowed to require all the doctors employed by them to refer only to them unless there's an extraordinary really? reason. They are legally allowed to do that. So stark or self-referral and that's There's, there's an not... exception for that. Okay. There's an exception that for that. The, um... And it's legal. It's legal. The American Hospital Association has great lobbyists, much better than the American Medical Association yeah, lobbyists. I would say so. My goodness. Mm -hmm. And okay. then the hospital is often compensated more than a doctor's office would be compensated for the same exact test, like a nuclear scan. Right. Well, yeah. Their, their billing is completely different. So for this reason, tens of thousands of cardiologists have taken jobs with hospitals where they get a salary that's more than they could have made on their own. And hopefully they've negotiated an exit clause so they can leave any time and take their patients and their equipment and their building back. Mm. And that's, that's what we see a lot of. So with hospital integration, let, let, let me um, understand the, the definition of it better. So the hospital purchases the practice lock, stock, and barrel, building. Well, staff. they'll lease they'll lease the doctor's building, or they'll buy the doctor's building, uh -huh. and they they'll make handle the, the overhead in the office. They they handle all the overhead. All the marketing. All, all the marketing. They they take over everything. Payroll. Everything. All under the hospital's ID number. Okay, and so the doctor practices in his office. Hopefully, has. He has the freedom to practice the way he wishes to practice. Yes. I think the, some of the good may be that the doctor then is covered underneath the hospital's compliance plan. Mm -hmm. Quality. And their, and their bigger malpractice policy. Okay, so there's some and he perks. Gets more, and he may get more referrals yeah, from the hospital. So there's some perks to there's doing There's some perks, this. yeah. What are the cons? The cons are frustration over bureaucracy. <laughs> Oh, I can't imagine that. An inability to withdraw if he was silly enough to sign a non-compete. Sometimes the hospital will give the doctor an extra two or three or four hundred thousand dollars in exchange for a non-compete. And then if the doctor gets miserable, he has to leave town. And sometimes the hospital administrators can be dictators. They can be very dictatorship, dictatorly <laughs> and have, you know, say, hey, I decided you're going to do a lot more of this type of thing and a lot less of that type of thing. We're going to make you our Medicaid specialist. We're going to have you be in charge of this particular type of procedure. I don't want to do that. Well, tough luck. You sold us your practice. So that, that's where the doctors can get upset. And we see hospitals buy practices or bring doctors in. We see the doc, them take the doctors back out. So the pendulum swings. swings back and forth. Some doctors are very happy to be hospital employees, and some are less happy. Okay. All Something right. to be carefully looked at considered before. but the divorce clause is the most important thing yes so I guess the you know what we have to say here is when you're contemplating doing something like this you've got to make sure that you've got a back door out and it's and it's equitable right and, and I guess that's true for anything I mean we talked about when we when we first started this discussion this evening we talked about that don't sign anything you don't understand and make sure that you protect yourself. And think through the worst case scenario. Because right. worst case scenarios happen all the time. That's right, they do. Okay, that's hospital integration.